The F-35 Lightning II is the undisputed king of marketing. It is a technological marvel, a flying supercomputer, and the most expensive weapon system in human history. But it has a fatal flaw. It needs a pristine, high-maintenance sanctuary to survive. If you bomb the runway, the king stays on the ground. But in the frozen forests of the north, there is a predator that does not care about your runways. It does not need a massive support crew, and it certainly does not need the permission of a superpower to dominate the skies. For decades, the world has been hypnotized by the sheer size of the American military-industrial complex and the brute force of Russian aerospace engineering. We look at the F-35 and the Su-57 Felon as the only titans that matter. But what if we have been looking in the wrong direction? What if the deadliest evolution in modern aerial warfare is not coming from a massive empire, but from a nation that turned survival into an art form? Welcome to the strategic reality of the Gripen E, a platform that is quietly rewriting the laws of physics and finance. But today, Air Dom is taking you deeper. We are analyzing a seismic shift, a propulsion revolution that takes this Swedish Viper and turns it into a dragon. We are talking about an engine upgrade and a doctrinal shift that transforms a defensive tactical fighter into a strategic power projector. This is not just a story about a new turbine. This is a story about the democratization of air dominance. This is about what happens when you strap a next-generation heart into a body built for pure survival. To understand why this matters, you have to understand the philosophy of the architects behind this machine. The Swedish defense doctrine was forged in a terrifying shadow of the Cold War. They knew they could never match the Soviet Union plane for plane. If the balloon went up, their airbases would be craters within the first hour. So, they built a fighter that treats a highway lane like a runway. They built a jet that can be refueled and rearmed by a handful of conscripts in the middle of a snowstorm in less than 10 minutes. That is the DNA of the Gripen. It is the guerrilla warrior of the skies. But the critics always pointed to one weakness. They said it lacked the raw, kinetic punch of the heavyweights. They said it was light on legs and light on thrust. The Gripen E was the first answer to that, integrating the General Electric F414G engine. That was a massive step up, utilizing the same proven architecture found in the Super Hornet. But the intelligence we are analyzing today suggests a leap into the future. We are looking at the full potential of this airframe when it pushes that power plant to its absolute limits. We are looking at a scenario where this airframe leverages a thrust-enhanced propulsion system capable of generating over 22,000 pounds of thrust. Let us cut the math and talk survival. In a merge, that split second where two jets cross paths and the fight begins, energy is currency. Spend it wrong, and you die. Heavy stealth fighters like the Su-35 or the F-35 are confused bullies, they rely on brute force to regain speed after a turn. The Gripen E operates on a different philosophy. With the F-414 engine cranking out 22,000 pounds of thrust against such a light airframe, the Gripen does not just accelerate, it explodes forward. This high thrust-to-weight ratio allows it to sustain rate fights that would stall a heavier jet. While the enemy pilot is pushing the throttle through the firewall trying to regain momentum, the Gripen has already pivoted, nosed over, and secured a firing solution. It turns the laws of physics into a weapon, forcing the enemy to fight inside a foam booth with a knife-wielding gymnast. But the kinetic performance is only the tip of the spear. The real game-changer here is Super Cruise. For those uninitiated in high-stakes aerodynamics, Super Cruise is the holy grail of modern fighter propulsion. It is the ability to fly faster than the speed of sound, breaking the sound barrier, without engaging the afterburner. Why is this critical? Because afterburners are thirsty beasts. They dump raw fuel directly into the exhaust stream. It gives you a massive kick of speed, but it burns through your fuel tank in minutes. Most fighters, including the standard variants of the F-35, have to choose between speed and range. They can dash at Mach 1.6, but only for a short sprint before they have to slow down to conserve fuel. A Gripen E equipped with this next-generation engine architecture changes that equation entirely. 
It offers the pilot the ability to cruise at Mach 1.2 or Mach 1.3 for extended periods. This expands the no-escape zone of its Meteor missiles. It allows the aircraft to patrol vast swathes of airspace, responding to threats hundreds of miles away in minutes, not hours, and arriving with a full tank of fuel, ready to fight. This thermal management capability brings us to the invisible war, the infrared spectrum. Modern anti-air missiles do not just look for radar reflections, they look for heat. They hunt the scorching plume of exhaust trailing behind the jet. The hotter the engine, the easier it is to kill. By achieving supersonic speeds without the afterburner, the upgraded Gripen significantly reduces its thermal signature. The engine breathes ice-cold air, mixing it with the exhaust to hide its heat signature like a needle in a haystack. To an enemy infrared search and track system, the Gripen becomes a ghost. It is there, moving at breakneck speeds, but it does not burn bright enough to lock onto until it is far too late. Now, let us venture into the Black Project's territory. Defense analysts are buzzing about the modular potential of this propulsion system, specifically regarding silent running. We are looking at the potential integration of hybrid electric taxiing systems in future block upgrades. This is not just eco-friendly public relations, it is a tactical nightmare for the enemy. Picture this. A squadron of Gripens is dispersed deep in a Nordic forest. No heat signature. No turbine whine. Just the hum of electric torque as they reposition for takeoff. To a satellite passing overhead scanning for the thermal bloom of a jet engine, these aircraft simply do not exist. They are holes in the data. They can ambush from the tree line, ignite the main turbines only at the moment of launch, and be airborne before the enemy's warning systems even blink. It shifts the Gripen from a fighter jet to an aerial sniper. But before we talk about the price tag, ask yourself this. Is a stealth fighter actually useless if it cannot take off? Because that is the nightmare scenario NATO is quietly terrified of. If the runways are gone, the F-35 is a museum piece. The Gripen is a weapon. Furthermore, the added power generation of a new engine is not just about speed, it is about electricity. Modern warfare is electronic. The Gripen E is already famous for its advanced electronic warfare suite, its ability to jam radars and create false targets. But electronic warfare requires massive amounts of electrical power. A more powerful engine acts as a massive flying generator. It allows the Gripen to pump out jamming signals of such intensity that it can burn through the filters of enemy radars. It turns the fighter into a flying void, a black hole in the enemy's situational awareness. This brings us to the geopolitical earthquake this aircraft represents. The global arms market is currently a duopoly. If you want a fifth generation fighter, you have to beg Washington for the F-35. That comes with a heavy price tag, not just in dollars, but in sovereignty. You cannot fix it yourself. You cannot modify it. You are tethered to the American logistic chain. On the other side, you have the Russian Su-57, a platform plagued by production delays and crippling sanctions. The Gripen E, armed with this revolutionary engine, shatters that paradigm. It offers near fifth generation performance, and in some electronic warfare aspects, superior performance, at a fraction of the life cycle cost. We are talking about a unit cost of roughly $60 million versus the 80 to 100 million for its competitors. But the real killer is the cost per flight hour. The Gripen costs pennies on the dollar to fly compared to the heavy stealth jets. For a nation like Brazil, which has already bet big on the Gripen, or for countries like India, the Philippines, or Finland, this is the ultimate strategic trump card. It allows them to build an air force that is large enough to matter. Quantity has a quality all its own. A fleet of 100 highly capable, dispersed, super-cruising Gripens is a far more difficult problem for an invader to solve than a fleet of 20 high-maintenance stealth fighters that are stuck on the ground because of a software glitch or a lack of spare parts. Let us analyze the road not taken scenario. What if the Gripen E becomes the standard for the non-aligned world? We see a shift in the balance of power. 
The United States System relies warning. on its technological radar overmatch to dictate failure. terms. But if a smaller nation can field error. a fighter that can blind American radars and outrun American air-to-air -air missiles, the calculation changes. The risk of intervention becomes too high. The Gripen becomes a denial-of-access weapon. It creates a porcupine strategy. You might be able to kill the beast eventually, but you are going to swallow a lot of quills in the process. Consider the tactical flexibility of the weapons bay. The integration of the Meteor missile is key here. The Meteor is a ramjet-powered missile with a throttleable engine. Unlike a standard rocket motor that burns out in seconds, the Meteor can sustain its speed all the way to the target. When you launch a Meteor from a Gripen E traveling at super cruise speeds at 40,000 feet, you are giving that missile a massive kinetic head start. You are extending its range to over 100 kilometers. This allows the Gripen pilot to take a shot from outside the enemy's retaliation envelope and then turn cold, disappearing into the electronic noise. We must also address the human element. The cockpit of the Gripen E is designed for the information age. It uses a single wide area display, fusing data from radar, infrared sensors, and data links into a single, intuitive picture. With the new engine allowing for more aggressive maneuvering, the pilot needs this cognitive relief. The system manages the energy state, telling the pilot exactly how much power they have, how far they can push, energy and where the optimal. optimal escape route lies. It is an AI-assisted co-pilot in every sense of the word. Critics might argue that without a stealth airframe, without the angular, radar-absorbing shape of the F-22 or F-35, the Gripen is dead meat in a modern war. Air Dom respectfully disagrees. Stealth is not an invisibility cloak, it is a delay mechanism. Eventually, radar technology will catch up to stealth shapes. We are already seeing low-frequency radars that can detect stealth fighters. When stealth fails, what is left? Performance. Electronic warfare. Tactics. The Gripen bets on the idea that it is better to be hard to hit and hard to find than it is to be theoretically invisible. It bets on the fact that in a high-intensity conflict, the runways will be gone in the first hour. The F-35 needs pristine concrete. The Gripen needs a strip of asphalt and a fuel truck. In a war of attrition, the plane that can keep flying is the plane that wins. This new engine technology amplifies that survivalist philosophy. It gives the Gripen the legs to retreat deep into friendly territory, refuel, and surge back into the fight. It allows for hit-and-run tactics on a strategic scale. Imagine a swarm of Gripens appearing on the flank of an enemy bomber formation, unleashing a volley of meteors, and then hitting the afterburners to vanish at Mach 2 before the escorts can react. It is guerrilla warfare at 30,000 feet. The implications for nations bordering aggressive superpowers are profound. A country operating this upgraded Gripen E does not need to defeat the enemy air force entirely. They just need to make the airspace so contested, so dangerous, and so unpredictable that the enemy cannot operate close air support. If you can stop the enemy bombers from pounding your cities and your troops, you have won half the war. The Gripen E is the ultimate shield for the underdog. So, does this single fighter jet redefine the global balance of power? The answer is a resounding yes. It challenges the monopoly of the superpowers. It proves that smart engineering can triumph over brute force and unlimited budgets. It offers a path for nations to defend their skies without bankrupting their economies Systems or selling online. their souls to ready. a foreign capital. The Gripen E, with its revolutionary heart, stands ready. It is watching from the tree line, engines cold, systems scanning. It is the dark horse of modern aviation, and it is waiting for the giants to make a mistake. In the high-stakes poker game of aerial dominance, Sweden has not just folded, they have gone all in with a hand that nobody saw coming. This is the reality of the modern battlefield. It is not always the biggest dog in the fight, it is the one with the sharpest teeth and the smartest instincts. If you want to stay ahead of the curve on military aviation, if you want the analysis that the mainstream media is too afraid or too slow to cover, you are in the right place. Smash that like button to help us break the algorithm's radar, drop your thoughts in the comments.
would you take 100 gripens or 20 F-35s? And make sure you are subscribed to Air Dom. We do not just report the news, we dominate the narrative. Stay sharp.